Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. Uh, listen, I got just a little frog in my throat. I was in uh, Columbus, Ohio on last night, and what a tremendous time we had up there. Um, uh, listen, I want you to join me in praying for Ohio. Um, in November, a, a tremendous vote is going to take place, and they're trying to do in Ohio, what was done in Michigan. They're trying to codify into state law abortions. They're trying to uh, uh, fix it where um, uh, uh, regardless of what the uh, Supreme Court has done, they're trying to uh, make that the law, uh, state law. And uh, there are some powerful Christians up there. I thank God that the Christians in Ohio is not taking this lying down. I thank God that they're, they're not being trusting of the government. They they understand that if this thing takes place, it an additional 30,000 babies, 30,000 lives will be at stake. And I met some wonderful people. I was at uh, uh, a wonderful church, Columbus Christian Center, uh, Drs. David and Tracy Forbes. What a tremendous couple they are. I got a chance to share the stage with Lieutenant uh, 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 Colonel uh, Alan West. And what a mighty man of God uh, he is retired. And uh, uh, as you know, West was a part of Congress, and uh, we shared the stage together there, and we met some fantastic, fantastic people who love Jesus Christ and who are getting the job done for the Lord. And uh, I I'm praying for the saints up there. I want to say to those who are watching in the area, when it's time to vote, you got to get out there and vote. Vote early. Vote early. You need to do this because, see, what the enemy is trying to do, you know, uh, since Roe v. Wade has been overturned and, it's been, and now it's been sent back to the states, now uh, uh, wicked people are trying to codify into state law uh, abortion for that state. And, uh, and in these states, you, you know what they're doing? They're moving to defund birthing centers. Just check it. Just check it out. Why would you want to defund an organization that is serving children, that is serving babies, and uh, uh, they don't perform abortions, but they're serving babies? And uh, and you say you love children, and you say you love you're for a woman's choice. What if a woman chooses to give birth? Shouldn't these uh, ministries that, that aid women who give birth, who choose to have their babies, shouldn't these ministries uh, get uh, funding as well? Why is it that we're cutting federal funding and state funding to ministries that do good things like this, but that in many cases, they're trying to increase funding for the Planned Parenthoods of this world as uh, ministries that, uh, uh, organizations, excuse me, that kill children. So I'm, I am fired up about this. I, I pray that every believer uh, in the state of Ohio uh, would show up, would vote, would let your uh, voice be heard and listen. Listen, don't be one of those Christians, please don't, who pray one way and vote another. You can't pray against wickedness like this and then turn around and vote for it or support people who are for the kind of wickedness that you're praying against. So I'm, I, listen, I'm, I'm honored. I was honored to be there last night. It was a tremendous move of God. Uh, I was uh, with some wonderful people. And I believe that the people of Ohio are going to turn out, they're going to step up, and they're going to do what needs to be done. Having said that, I'm excited about being back in Raleigh, uh, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, in my office, making preparations for Bible study tonight. 
and God is going to bless us real good. The Lord whispered something in my ear uh, right as I got ready to leave for Ohio. And he says, I want you to talk about this. I want you to teach on this. And my friends, tonight there is a word uh, from the Lord that is going to strengthen the believers. We're living in some challenging times. And the Lord is saying to every believer, uh, buckle up. You know, I said to someone the other day, they asked me, uh, they asked me in an interview, said, wouldn't, what is your word uh, for uh, the people of God today? People who may be going through persecutions and different things like that. I said in a, uh, I, my response was kind of odd and they chuckled, but I said, uh, buckle up, buttercup, get tough. It's time to get strong in the Lord and to stay strong because the battle is on. There's a battle for our minds. There's a, there's a battle for our hearts. They're trying to convince us that men can turn themselves into women, that women can turn themselves into men, that green is blue and blue is green, that orange is the new black and black is the old orange, so forth and so on. They're telling us things. They're telling us things. And by the way, by the way, just in time for the 2024 elections, it seems like he's coming back. Good old COVID and uh, mass mandates. They're talking about this now and, and these kinds of things. So you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I hope uh, the pastors out there uh, and the leaders who fell for it last time, who bought it hook, line, and sinker, who 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 were, were glad to close your church, who just just p t took science over the Bible. Uh, I hope this time around that you will say, you know what? I'm going to trust God. If I get a chance to take this test again, I'm going to ace this test. I'm going to keep my church doors open. We're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to live holy and we're going to trust God to take care of us. And, and let me tell you, all of us need to know that if the Lord, if and when God gets ready to take us home, he won't need COVID's help. God knows how to just say to us, time's up. And you know what? We drop dead. So uh, he knows what he's doing. All we got to do is trust him. And if you trust him, if you trust him, if you trust him, I'm here to tell you, you will live to see the God of the Bible come through for you every time. David said, I have been young, yet now am I old, and I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. I'm telling you, David was right when he said it then in Psalms 39, 37, and it's right today. So I thank God. I thank God. I'm excited about teaching the word of the Lord tonight. I want you to meet me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Before we go off, I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you for your prayers. You are a fantastic audience. I want to thank you for how you have stood by uh, this ministry and this preacher. And I want you to know that God is, a, uh, is enabling us to make a difference, to be a force in the world and a force for Jesus Christ, a force uh, that's telling people, stick with the scripture. The Bible is right. Jesus is coming again. Christianity is the only way, the only true religion on the face of this earth is Christianity. I believe it. I believe this with all of my heart. The reason I believe it is that because Jesus said it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. And Jesus brought this way. It was called in the, in, in the book of Acts, in the early chapters of the book of Acts, uh, that it wasn't called Christianity and the believers weren't called Christians. They were called followers of the way. And I'm grateful today to be in the way, not in your way or blocking your path, but to be in the way of life that Jesus Christ came to bring to us. So my friends, meet me here tonight, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yes, Bible study. And listen, I praise the Lord that uh, 
uh, I got friends out there, and you good folk, you guys, uh, you got the got the little drum roll down, and I appreciate that, and uh, it just blesses me, and I'm glad that we can laugh. I'm glad that we're uh, listen, we're having a good time. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. With all this stuff that's going on in the world, with the devil doing what he's doing, you're not listening to some depressed, angry, mad, sad preacher who don't know uh, uh, what's going on and, and uh, don't know uh, where to look and where to turn. Let me tell you something, my friends. My heart is filled with joy. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm a happy man. You're looking at a happy man. I'm happy in Jesus. The Bible declares that if we keep his word before us, uh, he will keep joy and happiness going on in us. So I think. Thank God. You know, the Bible says blessed is the man that is happy is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn for Psalms number one. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate every day and every night. Listen, my friends, God, listen, I'm going on. I've already invited you, but I will tell you this. I'm, I'm done. Listen. Live, live for the Lord. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Not just exist, but live. There's a quality of life that God wants to bring to every believers. Believers, even today, ought to be the most, the, 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 the uh, most smiling. We ought to be uh, people with joy. We ought to be the most whimsical people in society. Don't you be one of those long faced, sad sack believers who never smile, never laugh. And you ask them, well, how you doing? What's going on? And they look at you and say, nothing much. What? There's a whole lot going on. God's moving by his spirit. And uh, I'm grateful to be on the Lord's side. So I'll see you here tonight. I'm going to do it again. Gary, I'm going to do it again at, uh, tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> we are going to study the word of the Lord together. God bless you.